The February 5th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is now called to order. We will now have the Ple Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Shao. Commissioners, please turn your mics on. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now have roll taken by staff liaison, Francine Spriegel. Commissioner Boyajan. Here. Commissioner Brousseau. Here. Commissioner Bryman. Uh, absent, Commissioner cutler Dye. Here. Commissioner Letterer. Here. Commissioner Leone. Here. Commissioner George and Jeb McGuigan are absent. Commissioner Owens. Here. Commissioner Saute. Here. Commissioner Schooley. Here. Commissioner Shaw. Here. Commissioner Stein. Here. Adult Commissioner Martinez. Here. And Adult Commissioner Petrus is absent. Thank you. Thank you, Francine. At this time, I would like to ask Commissioner Dye to introduce item number four, the public comment section of our meeting. This is the time in our meeting when we invite members of the public to state their concerns about youth-related issues in our city or to present items for commission consideration. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? There being none, let's move on. Okay, at this time, I would like to ask Commissioner Owens to introduce item number five, the guest speakers portion of our meeting. Our guest speaker tonight is Sue Engler from the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission to the City of Thousand Oaks. Uh, good evening, commissioners, uh, staff, um, the community. My name is Susan Engler. I'm a resident of Thousand Oaks, uh, and I'm a member of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission which was established much like your commission, but actually you predate the commission, the traffic commission. I think you were established in 1985 and we were established in 1993. Um, our current commission structure was established in 2006. Um, when we were first established, we had nine members and I see you have more than that, which I'm impressed that so many young people are a part of your commission. Um, our meetings are held here in the boardroom of the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza. Um, we meet the third Wednesday of the month or dependent on our work schedule, possibly up to every quarter, but often every month. Um, we also meet at 6.30 in the evening, as do you, consistent with all commissions. Our purpose is to gather and review information related to traffic here in the community and also how it applies to regional traffic concerns. Um, the traffic problems that are brought to our commission can be very, um, very broad or very big. They affect a lot of people such as on freeways and interchanges and bridges and <clears throat> projects that are coming up that we know that we're all impacted by um, or they may affect small small communities such as um, one one street which has a lot of high-speed traffic and poor line of sight and those citizens come to us and say we have a problem will you help um, our purpose is to <clears throat> be the forum for the community um, to enable them to receive the assistance from staff and the direction and guidance that they need in order to progress with their issues, um, to learn about traffic and what can and cannot be done safely in a community, to uh, restrict speed or to um, allow um, speed uh, limits to be changed, um, to most importantly, just give them access to the community. As you have all shown an interest in the uh, community and in the city, um, the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission is another opportunity for the public to come and speak asking for help, guidance, and direction. And we're one step before they might go to the city council. And the more often this conversation occurs in the community, whether it's at the Traffic Commission or it's at City Council, the more uh, reasoned and um, appropriate the resolutions are when we get there. We don't always know the solution and we don't always know uh, where, we'll, uh, where we will best land, but 
we do get there with the most communication possible. And I think that these commissions that are manned by the community, the citizen communities, such as the Youth Commission or the Traffic Commission or the Planning Commission, we are providing a service to the public. Um, so we are much, many things traffic, not all things traffic. Uh, we are often uh, asked about issues that have to do with the freeways, and that would be a Caltrans concern. And we can communicate with Caltrans, we can, through staff, and we can provide members of the community with information that they are requesting, such as a contact person. <clears throat> um, or maybe an ex explanation of what's being done and why. Um, and we might advocate for the community when it comes to a bike lane on the Wendy Drive Bridge. Um, we don't have control over decisions that are made by the state, but we do have the ability to communicate our concerns as commissioners for the citizens to city council. Um, our most important thing is to, uh, in providing that forum to the community, <coughs> To provide excellent um, community service, to uh, give really good quality um, uh, hearings that are fair, they're efficient, and they are responsive to our citizens. Now, we're citizens also, and we actually listen and think, boy, if I were in that situation, how would I feel? And uh, we have some animated and not always concurring discussions, and I think that's great because our, pub, our community doesn't agree on everything either. Um, but <clears throat> we are committed to a uh, respectful communication um, and discussion so that we get to a point where everyone feels good about our decision and where we got. Um, our goal is to promote public uh, confidence in us and to trust our, our reasons for being here and our interest in helping them. Um, to promote their confidence and trust in their city. Um, as a <clears throat> traffic commissioner, I am affiliated with the city of Thousand Oaks, but I am a citizen member. I am unpaid, as you are, and um, committed to making sure that if we can improve traffic safety for uh, schools, for pedestrians, for cyclists, and for drivers, uh, and enhance the quality of living in the city of Thousand Oaks, and I've, uh, my commission has done a good, a good thing. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, I have a cold. Now, I did want to say um, that our, com our uh, commission is now a commission of five. We are, rep we represent, it. we are nominated by individual council members, and our, um, Commission stat commissioner status is ratified by a vote of the majority of the council. Um, we serve concurrent with the term of the city council. Oh, thank you. And um, we have a vice chair and we have a chair that rotate annually, and um, that we're nominated and voted on by the members by members of our uh, commission. So it's very. Um, uh, De uh, very uh, democratic in how we function and how we how we lead. Um, some of the things we've accomplished, I think that's more, I guess, to your interest. <clears throat> um, some of our accomplishments are, are directed at traffic calming measures, such as Avenida de los Arbles. We did that most recently um, between Moore Park Road and the 23 Freeway. And we turned a four-lane four -lane road uh, into a two-lane road with with zones for uh, parked cars on both sides, bicycle, uh, cyclists, both directions, single traffic lane going east and west, and a, a turn lane in the center. So there's a zone for each participant in that road to be. If you want to turn, you have a safe place to do that from. And if you are a cyclist, you have a safe place to, to ride. If you are a parked car you have a place where you can park and when you open your car door you're not in danger of being hit by a car who's traveling fast down the road. It actually accomplished um, uh, everything that a, a road is expected to provide a good level of service for the number of vehicles traveling on that road and we, we had 19,000 
vehicles traveling on Avenue de los Arbolas every day. And you can't do traffic calming if you have 20,000 plus. And so we were just able to try that, and it actually really worked. And our average speeds are the same as when they were traveling in these lanes without all of the protective mechanisms of a traffic calming configuration. And that sounds, to me, it's kind of exciting because it worked. But what led to that were two different meetings with public forums where staff communicated to the, um, by, they advertised the meetings, they advertised in the newspaper, they sent notices to everyone who lived uh, in the area of the, of the uh, street where we were going to make this change. And they really worked hard to communicate that this was coming. And everyone was invited to come and speak. And we had a lot of speakers come who had, they had opposition to that particular reconfiguration. But um, while they were there opposing it, they would give us a reason. And all of their reasons were because they had no access to safe travel. And our are what we realize is that even though people said, no, I don't want it, what in fact they were asking for was a street that worked better. And so we put it in, and in fact, it's become very successful. So it can be very frightening when you have a public forum, and it sounds like people hate your idea. But when you make a decision because you know it's the best thing for the community, um, it, it can really work out. And it's part of what we did to be sure that our um, our city was safe, that every everyone using that road was safe. Uh, so that's one example. You'll see traffic calming measures that have been instituted in a number of located locations throughout the city. And that same configuration um, was proposed in Newbury Park. You see it on Avenue de los Flores. Uh, you might see that come up um, on larger streets like Hillcrest, um, but that's coming. We're not sure uh, what will come of that um, evaluation by staff. Um, we review speed limits that are uh, the signage all through the city needs to be consistent with what should be in a, in a residential community. Um, sometimes the speed limit signs were out of, out of whack, and so we brought them all in, consistent to what the state law allows us to set speed limits to be based upon what 85% of cars traveling at are, are clocked at doing. So we try to be sure that everything is uh, what you would expect if you're a driver, particularly for new drivers. Um, uh, it, it, you don't want anyone to be surprised, and you want to be sure if you make a change that they're aware of it. So we make sure we take steps to flag a change in the traffic arrangement. So uh, we have very good staff in the Public Works Department, and we're very proud of what work they do to make sure that we all know what's coming. Some of the other things we've done is to review uh, Thousand Oaks Transit fares, and we've instituted <clears throat> some tr fare increases to make sure that it pays for itself. Um, but we did it in a manner that was, um, I hope, as uh, appropriate for the individuals using the different methods of transportation in the city, such as the, um, the Dial-A-Ride program. We didn't want that to, be, to pay for itself. It would have more than doubled the fare from one month to the next. And that was something that we worked very hard not to accomplish. We tried to <clears throat> find, to bridge that, to enable people to um, get used to where we had to take them in the fairs. But that's, not, that's one of our least favorite things to do. We also evaluate whether crossing guards are, well, are, uh, are placed appropriately near schools, if a school is closing. Um, <clears throat> if students aren't using a crossing, gar crossing area, then we re- work the relocation, we relocate our uh, crossing guards. Um, and I think the most important thing that we do is to um, look at public safety, whether you're a pedestrian, a cyclist, or you are a driver. And um, so it, it goes on and on. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, we're very concerned about safe routes to school, um, making sure that pedestrians are safe. <clears throat> crossing or walking from one, uh, from one point to another in areas that don't have sidewalks and maybe there aren't, uh, there aren't um, there's not proper illumination at night if they don't have street lights. Um, upcoming uh, agenda items that we will be working through the next six months uh, include Westlake Boulevard and Valley Spring Drive. We want to review the northbound right turn 
um, which is an, a kind of an interesting turn where by the time you've turned is you have to look over your shoulder to actually see if there's traffic turning that you're merging in with. So we're reviewing that, and that was brought to me two years ago uh, by a citizen. Um, we're looking at Westlake Boulevard and uh, Westlake Boulevard at, at their juncture and reviewing that left turn setup. Um, we'll be learning about the protected and permissive left turn traffic operations in the city. And, um, and we're also looking at Hillcrest Boulevard restriping. Um, and I think that's also a traffic calming measure to, again, make it safe for all elements of traffic on that that's using that boulevard um, I want to turn this over to the Commission if you have questions because I'm sure I haven't touched on on the things that may be more interesting to you than what I've been able to address in my few minutes thank you so much for your presentation I think we all learned a lot does anyone have any questions um, Katie so it sounds like you guys really do um, take into consideration public comments and such, but while um, while you're facilitating these traffic calming measures and you're notif notifying people and actually doing the work to change the traffic, um, can you take part in this facilitating at all? Um, well, you are always welcome. Uh, the, everyone is welcome to come and speak at all of our meetings and we have public comments which you have in your agenda as well and then there's you know the public comments portion of every agendized item and you can come and speak about an issue that is a concern that isn't on our agenda so we're not aware of it and you bring it to our, to our attention at which point we can't take action other than to ask staff to then address it with you at which point they might guide you if you say you want speed bumps, speed humps to ins be installed in your street. There is a process that you have to take. Uh, we just did that for Kaya Levo where we made that recommendation to city council. I don't know if council will agree uh, because we are an advisory commission, as are you. We advise, we don't um, make a decision that is that significant. Our advice to council was that we had heard two nights worth of testimony and felt strongly that when 98% of the residents of a street sign a petition confirming that they want speed humps even if they're in front of their home, even if they listen to the noise of the cars going over too fast, even if the signs that say danger speed humps or slow down speed humps are right in front of their house and they're not very attractive, at least they know the process because they've come to us and then gone, gone forward. The council knows that we've vetted and given everyone an opportunity to talk as long as they needed. But as youth, you are more, most definitely encouraged to bring your concerns, especially as young drivers, because you know it's been a while since I was 16 and driving for the first time. Um, but if you have concerns that you see in the city that affect your driving experience or if you're a cyclist or you know, I would want you to bring that to us and a lot of times we don't know where to go and so that's why I was happy to accept your invitation to come and speak because I'd like for people to know that this commission is their commission. That's so interesting. I actually uh, attended a meeting, uh, the last month's meeting, and it was really cool to be able to see um, kids range. There was a there was a little girl who was about five or six years old, and she even spoke on behalf of her neighborhood. And there was people all the way up to senior citizens speaking. So it was a really, it was a really community neighborhood type of thing, and it was really touching. But um, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, um, I guess thank you so much for your presentation. Oh, you're Appreciate very welcome. It. Thank you for the invitation. <clears throat> Okay, at this time, I would like to ask Commissioner Boyajian um, to turn the meeting over. Thank you, Chair Leone. And item six is school and liaison reports. So in addition to being an advisory body to the City Council, the Youth Commission also appoints the commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. And for tonight, item 6A is the Teen Center Advisory Committee. Can Commissioner uh, Martinez please speak on behalf of the Teen Center? Thank you. I would love to. Winter has been very busy at the Teen Center. 
and it isn't about to slow down. This Saturday, we'll be having both a first aid workshop and a self-defense workshop. Additionally, we're also hosting our annual Valentine's Day dance for 7th and 8th graders from 7 to to 10 o'clock this Saturday, February 8th. This event will feature the phenomenal DJ Slick playing the best music and videos with Enhanced Light and Laser Show, a Candy Heart guessing jar, a photo booth area, tons of giveaways, and free pizza and soda. Admission is still just $10 at the door. Wow, just $10. On Friday, February 14th, you won't need to worry about having a Valentine when you're shredding the slopes of Mountain High with us. This is an all-day trip with the cost of $70. Includes transportation and supervision. On Saturday, February 22nd, we'll be hosting a very important anti-bullying seminar in cooperation with Senator Fran Pavley and District Attorney Greg Trotton and the Unified Association of Caneo Teachers. The seminar is entitled Cyberbullying, What Your Family Needs to Know. Now, this is a very important topic that affects young people and their parents. The cruelty of bullying is magnified when it is posted on a public forum like the Internet. Learn what you can do to prevent this abuse and about state law, which impacts, about the new state law, which impacts student behavior off campus. The workshop takes place from 10 to 11.30 a.m., and you can get more information on the Teen Center website. Also that day, February 22nd, a Superstars in Training workshop hosted by Sade Champagne will be conducted. Teens from 12 to 17 years of age will learn comprehensive techniques to expand or break into the world of show business through celebrity guest speakers who have been there before. That night, the Teen Center will be hosting the second of two two high school boys basketball league evaluations. We, will, we are still accepting single player as well as team registration for the league, which begins March 1st. Also on Saturday, March 1st, we'll be hosting a babysitter's training and certification class from 12 to 4 p.m. and a high school dance competition later that night from 6 to 11 p.m. Now you can register or get more information about these programs at www.thousandoaksteencenter.com or call us at 805 805- Four nine four five one five six, or visit our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Thousand Oaks Teen Center. We're also posting some interesting things to our brand new Instagram page at Thousand Oaks Teen Center. That is all we have for tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Martinez. And next up for item 6B, we have the Thousand Oaks Library Teen Advisory League, or TOTAL. So um, to give that report, can Commissioner Schooley? Thank you, Commissioner Boyajan. So, some upcoming events at the Thousand Oaks Library include the Digital Bookmobile. So, uh, the library now has new books that are called e-books, which are digital books. And there will be a digital bookmobile that will be coming uh, Friday, February 14th from 11 to 5 p.m. at the Newberry Park Branch and Saturday, February 15th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Grant R. Brim Hall Library. So you can come on over and learn about how this new ebook thing works and how you can download videos and ebooks to your Kindle or iPad. Uh, library staff will be on, ha- on hand to help all people of all ages to learn how to download the, new- the newest ebooks. Uh, this event is free and open to all public. Uh, next, the Friends of the Thousand Oaks Library will be hosting a spring used book sale, which will be held Friday, February 28th, 2014, uh, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the sat, uh, excuse me, at no, yeah, okay. And also on Saturday, March 1st, 2014, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Newberry Park Branch Library. So you can come over and buy some books that have been used for $2 or less. And last but not least, <coughs> teens are invited to a pre Valentine's Day chocolate party. So what this is, is you can come on over to the library and 
make some holiday Valentine snacks involving chocolate. Who doesn't love chocolate, right? Especially on Valentine's Day. So this will be Sunday, February 9th, 2014, from 2 to 3 p.m., and it's free. So this event is for teens. So come on over, um, grades 6 through 12, and come make yummy treats to enjoy and give as, give as gifts. Thank you. That is all. Thank you so much, Commissioner Schooley. And lastly, item 6C tonight is the um, school um, ASG ASB report. So I'm going to um, hand the meeting over to Commissioner Stein. The Youth Commission invites representatives from each of our local high schools and intermediate schools to present information about school activities for the purpose of making community spirit. So first up we have Josh Gerlich from Kalina Middle School. In the month of January, many events took place at Kalina Middle School. First off, we had our spelling bee hosted by one of our Kalina teachers, Mrs. Morton. In third place was Arabella Robb. In second place was Natalie Nietzsche. And in first place was Jeremy Gerlich, and he is a sixth grader. We also had our geography bee hosted by another teacher by the name of Mr. Olson. And in third place was Maya Singe and Mark Sotile, both seventh graders. In second place was Katie Kong, and she is also a seventh grader. And in first place was Sam Ratcliffe, and he is a sixth grader. There is an open house held on January 15th to welcome incoming sixth graders to the great programs at Kalina Middle School. The highlight of the night was our Cougar Selfie Corner, where people can pose for a photo with our Kalina Cougar. We had a seventh grade field trip on January 21st to the California Science Center to see the Space Shuttle Endeavor. We also hold a program called Renaissance at Kalina Middle School and throughout the district that recognizes and rewards students with A's, B's, C's, E's, and S's. One of the rewards we provide are OOPS cards. At the beginning of the year, teachers decide on their OOPS. These include things such as homework late for full credit, bonus points on tests, choice of classroom seat, etc. Students with the highest Renaissance status, gold, get three OOPS per trimester. Silver gets two, and bronze gets one. We make different colored cards for each level with blank spaces for each oops. Teachers sign the card when they're used in their class. The ASB class made posters for each teacher explaining their oops, and students can use them as needed. Teachers love it because they were able to choose the oops that work for them, and students love the opportunity for a second chance. Next to food, it's a middle schooler's favorite reward. Our ASB election was held via recorded candidate speeches through our CNN broadcast system. Winners for trimester two include President Maxwell Shaw, Vice President Iris Renson, Renaissance Director Caitlin Steckel, Spirit Director Caitlin Zhao, Friendship Director Gabrielle Grossman, Girl Sports Director Lorelai Lemon, Secretary Emery Huang, and Treasurer Christia Holland. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. We always look forward to hearing your monthly reports from Kalina. Next, we have Kira Bird from Newberry Park High School. Hi. This past month at Newberry, we have just gotten back from winter break, so it's not a whole lot going on. But last Saturday, we had our winter formal, which was Sadie Hawkins, and a big success. And tomorrow, the boys' soccer is having a cronies fundraiser all day so go there and we can make some money for boys soccer and enjoy a good meal and boys volleyball girls lacrosse and track tryouts are all happening in the next two weeks so if you're interested in that go look up some information on that thank you thank you so much and last but not least we have commissioner owens with the report from sequoia middle school Here's the report from Sequoia Middle School. Renaissance at Sequoia is a school-wide reward system for grade-eligible students. Every Wednesday, they have an activity such as a dance party or taco trivia, where students who qualify for Renaissance are asked trivia <coughs> questions and receive a taco. So that's all to promote good grades and achieving high achievement in school. Cody is also going on, which is 
class of the year. Dress-up days continue to go on, such as color day, where homeroom classes select colors and all the students wear the chosen color on the on that specific day, and then receive Cody points for their class. And one recent lunchtime Cody activity was What's in the Skittles, where kids made pictures out of Skittles. Every minimum day, which is where the students get out early, ASB sponsors Uncle Chris's Italian Ice as a treat for students. Their winter fest dance was had just happened. Um, it was for all grades, and they had a great turnout. They had winter-themed activities and decorations. In addition, tours have been going on where ASB students have been given the opportunity to show incoming sixth graders and their families around the school. And the Spelling Bee and Geography Bee have been going on, and they've been completed. And Sequoia is very proud of their contestants and finalists. In addition, students are working on their science fair projects. And that is the report for Sequoia Middle School. Thank you, Commissioner Owens. Uh, we encourage ASB and ASG classes to uh, send a representative to our meetings every month, and we look forward to hearing your reports and hearing what your schools are up to. So back to Chair Leone. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stein. So item number seven on the agenda is project reports. The Youth Commission undertakes a number of projects during the year, and I will introduce the following commissioners who will oversee the coordination of these projects and present brief summaries and provide any updates. So item number seven A is Youth Leadership Summit. So Ali Boyajan is going to tell you about that. Hello. So as you know, youth and teens play an active role in supporting the community. And to do this, the Leadership Summit has been designed to provide you an opportunity to learn from leadership speakers, share concerns and ideas with community leaders, and discuss ways to keep our community youth friendly. The summit is not a one-way street. As a participant, you will be expected to utilize your knowledge with active participation in roundtable discussions throughout the day. The summit is going to be held on March 1st at 9 o'clock p.m., and this program is for 7th through 12th graders, and that is 9 o'clock 9 o'clock, a.m. And so um, applications are available online, and I'm going to show you how to get there. So you can go ahead and type in www.toaks.org forward slash youth. You guys can see that up there in the margin. And when you scroll down, there's a link to the applications, and that is right here. It's pretty big link. If you click on it, there's more information about the summit itself. Go ahead and fill out the questions listed. And when you are done, don't forget to press the next button. This will take you to another page to fill out a couple more questions and submit your application. And if you do not press this next button, your application will not be submitted. So please make sure to press this button. It's very important. Um, thank you so much. And back to Chair Leone. Thank you, Commissioner Boyajian. So item number 7B, next is the Youth Master Implementation Plan and Team Updates. So Commissioner Letterer is going to tell you about that. Thank you, Chair Leone. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan Letterer, and I'm the chair of the Youth Implementation Program. Our next meeting is next Wednesday, which is February 12th, and it'll take place in the community room at the TO Library. I would now like to ask each commissioner if um, they could give a brief summary of what's going on in their subcommittee, starting with Commissioner Stein of the Drugs and Alcohol Subcommittee. So today I am stepping in for Commissioner McGuigan um, to do his report on the Drugs and Alcohol Committee. Um, part of the committee's projects have been the reality parties, and um, you can look those up at straightupvc.org and find out more information about that. And the next scheduled reality party is on 4-26-2014. And also the next scheduled social change theater is on 3-9-14 from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. and 3 to 5 p.m. at the Teen Center. Um, part of what the Drugs and Alcohol Committee do is they schedule these social change theaters. And I just kind of have a quick outline of what that will be. And first, it'll start out with a nice icebreaker to get to meet all the new people that you will encounter at the Change Theater. And next, there will be a demonstration of process, demonstration of a party, and you get you and your parent get to talk about what um, parties are actually like and how you can uh, avoid negative things at parties. Um, next, demonstration scene of parents and teens arguing in the home. Um, what they what that is for is to avoid, help, create a healthy 
communication between a parent and a teen when talking about parties. And um, Commissioner McGuigan thought that'd be a great thing to add because an open dialogue between parents and kids is always a healthy thing to have in a relationship. And so there will be much more than that at the next scheduled social change theater. And again, that is on 3-9-2014 from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. and again at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And that is all for the Drugs and Alcohol Committee this month. Back to Ryan. Thank you, Commissioner Stein. I would now like to ask Commissioner Schooley to tell us about the Environmental Commission and the Environmental Team. So, again, a brief um, summary on what our main project this year is, is we're planning to make a public service announcement and then show it to all the high schools in the district and hopefully some middle schools. Um, so, so far, we're kind of like in the script writing process and also the film production process. So hopefully we'll be filming that within the next couple of weeks. And hopefully after that, we'll be able to start looking into other events such as Arbor Earth Day, which will be coming up in April. Thank you. That is all. Thank you, Commissioner Schooley. I would now like to ask uh, Commissioner Cutler Dye to tell us about the recreational team. In the recreation team, we have been working on a dodgeball event for high schools at the teen center. The cost is a dollar per person, and we encourage everyone to come in with teams of five to seven people. However, we still welcome single players to come and join a team on Friday, May 30th. For more information, call Pete Martinez at the teen center at 494- Five one five six. We are also working with CLU to host an intergenerational sports day at California Lutheran University, where senior teams will compete against youth teams in different sports events. This will be on April 4th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Admission is free and food and prizes are available until they run out. For more information, call 387-7362 or go to www.toaks.org forward slash youth. Hope we see you there. Thank you, Commissioner Cutler Dye. Uh, once again, I'd just like to remind you that our next meeting is next Wednesday, February 12th, in the community room at the TO Library. And we really need more volunteers, so feel free to come. I would like to turn the meeting back over to Chair Leone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Letterer. So item number 7C is a therapeutic dance, so I'll now turn the meeting over to Commissioner Saute. Thank you. So preparations for the therapeutic dance are underway, and it's getting really exciting because the decorations committee has been meeting, and we're starting to order all of the decorations, and some of them have started coming in, and they look really fantastic, so I'm getting super excited. Remember, the theme is rock and sock hop, so if you are going to attend, you need to dress according to the theme, so you could wear a poodle skirt. Or if you're a guy, you could wear a leather jacket. Um, the dance is on March 29th at the Alex Fior Teen Center from 6 to 9.30. To register, you need to go to www.crpd.org, and you need to register with the class number 4502.1141. If you have any questions, please call 381-2739. And we're going to have a few subcommittee reports, so... Right now, we'll have entertainment with Commissioner Owens. So, Entertainment Commission has been looking into different forms of entertainment that our participants can enjoy while they're eating their dinner. And as of now, we have contacted a group called the Alley Cats, which is a do-up a cappella group. And they will most certainly add a spark to the events of the night. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Owens. And then a short say speech summary from <laughs> publicity with Commissioner Shao. Thank you. Um, on publicity, we're currently working on the thank you card, the slideshow, and we're officially now looking for volunteers to help with setup and decorations for the therapeutic dance. Um, if you're interested, please contact and email youthcommission at toaks.org if you're interested. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all things in terms of when we're expecting volunteer information, uh, when we'll email you back, uh, feel free to look us up on Facebook. Just search Thousand Oaks Youth Commission or follow us on Instagram at Thousand Oaks YC. 
Thank you. And I quickly would like to thank some of the donors that have already given us money to help with the therapeutic dance. So I would like to thank Shrinky Drinks, Reka Garg, and Janice Wise for your wonderful donations. They have come in so handy, and we're truly grateful. And also, we have the invitation, just in case you wanted to see what it looks like. So it's really cute. And you can find this at the library, I'm assuming. And yes. And the therapeutic unit. Thank you. Back to Commis- Chair Leone. Thank you so much, Commissioner Sauté, for your report. Um, the last item in item 7 is 7D, um, the city internship program. So Commissioner Brousseau is going to tell you about that. Yes, as I'm sure many of you already know, the city this year is hosting an exciting internship program during the summer uh, for six weeks for high school juniors in a collaboration with the Conejo Valley Chamber of Commerce, California Lutheran University, Conejo Youth Employment Services, and CVUSD. Uh, I wanted to give an update on our progress in terms of recruiting businesses. Um, if you guys um, go to toaks.org slash city, the website for the city internship program, um, you'll be able to see that there's uh, logos of all of the businesses that we have who have signed up so far on our uh, to post an intern this summer, as well as a few more that aren't up there yet, unfortunately. Um, what we've done is allowed the businesses to just pro- oh, excuse me to provide a description of their internship. Uh, and if you click on the business logos on the website, you'll be able to see um, something like this, uh, which would give you um, a description of what the business is and what the internship that they're asking for would provide. Um, For instance, this is Sage Publications, and they're looking to give students an all-around encompassing internship during the summer that would allow them to see multiple different parts of the business um, at such a great uh, company that's extremely influential in the publication business. Um, And we are about to start accepting uh, student student applications. Um, The application for the student is at the bottom at the form section, um, it's online, just like the application for the Youth Summit. Um, I would recommend that you hold off on filling out an application for right now as we finish recruiting businesses so that you have a full idea of how many businesses and what businesses are participating in. Um, but we look forward to getting your applications and to helping students get great internships this summer to help them develop their career experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Brousseau. So um, the last portion of our meeting um, is where commissioners can provide any information, comments, or announcements, which no action by the commission will be taken. At this time, are there any commissioner comments? Commissioner Brousseau. Hi again. Um, Each year, the Ventura County Transportation Commission is required by law to hear the transit needs of transit-dependent or disadvantaged persons to improve transit transit, and encourage regional transportation coordination throughout Ventura County. If you'd like to help, we understand that finding new suggestions for transit improvements can be daunting, but we know that many people don't know where or how to comment, uh, and that's why we're allowing you to help improve the process by calling us at 1-800-438-1112 by emailing KELAM at goventura.org or by visiting the website at goventura.org to help us uh, understand the unmet transit needs in Ventura County and serve all the public as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brousseau. Are there any more commissioner comments? Um, Commissioner Owens? I would just like to stress the fact that our youth really does need to apply for the Youth Summit if they want to get their voice heard and really be an effective part of the change that's going on in the city. So I think the applications are available at tokes.org forward slash youth. But I really encourage you guys to apply. It's a really fun day and you really get to know a lot more about how the city is run as well as voice your own opinion. Thank you. Commissioner Brousseau. Really quickly to concur with Katie's statement, we have some very amazing and interesting um, community leaders coming to the summit, including Assembly Member Jeff Gorell and um, representatives from CVUSD and CRPD that would be able to take your concerns and your in, and your suggestions to heart and try and implement them in the community. So if you have any concerns, make sure to fill out an application for the Youth Summit at toaks.org slash youth. 
Thank you so much, Commissioner Brousseau. And just another reminder that we are offering community service hours for this event. Um, are there any other commissioner comments? Okay, there being none, um, I just want to stress one more time to please follow our new Instagram, which is um, Thousand Oaks YC and our Facebook page. So um, that is all we have for tonight. So the uh, February 5th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is now adjourned at 718.